MMA Digest here with Mark Hominick. So, Mark, you got a big fight coming up, a Korean zombie. What are your thoughts on the fight? You know, I, th I think it's a great fight to start off the pay-per-view. Two exciting fighters. He's, he's a guy who likes to push a pace. And, you know, I'm expecting kind of the unexpected because he's one of these fighters. He's, he's rather uh, uh, reckless on his feet, but he's got a strong submission game as well. So I'm really curious to see what kind of game plan he comes with. A lot of people think that this might be fight of the night. Uh, do you see that as well? I think staying composed uh, is a big thing in this fight, not getting caught up in, in the style of fight that he likes and you know taking him out with what I bring to the table and I think that's that's the plan is to take him out. And uh, fighting in Toronto again what are your thoughts on that the first time it was pretty amazing what do you expect this time out? A huge opportunity you know just like it was like you know to see the overwhelming kind of support I got uh, from the province and from the city it's, it's a huge opportunity for me you know I fought uh, almost 10 years before I finally got to fight in front of my home province and now I'm fighting back-to-back -back shows so it's, it's, it's very refreshing. Uh, you know, fight to fight, uh, do you feel an improvement in your game as well, like from April to uh, December? 100%, you, you know, like after, after the last fight, I definitely went back to the drawing board, looking at what I have to improve, and, you know, definitely, uh, you know, filling some of the holes. And that's the big thing, if you look at the best fighters in this game, you know, like George St. Pierre, he's, every game, every fight he comes in, he's, he reinvents himself. Guys like Rashad Evans, you know, they come in with a new skill set, and that's, it's a constant evolution that you have to be uh, working at. What do you think was the, the biggest issue in that uh, Aldo fight? I think the wrestling, you know, uh, the takedowns he scored really uh, changed the pace of the fight. Uh, and, uh, you know, without that, I think, uh, you know, I, I think I would have won that fight. So it's definitely, you know, you have to constantly improve and be humble uh, knowing that you have to improve. Do you, sorry, do you think you're reaching the point, Mark, where aside from GSP that you are, you, you're becoming the next Canadian superstar that people who don't even watch uh, mixed martial arts on a regular basis are starting to know who you are? Well, it's definitely like it felt like for, for me it was like a 15 year overnight success you know like after that last fight you know I, I've been training for 15 years fighting professionally for 10 and then all of a sudden you get that one opportunity and you, you kind of capitalize it like it's weird to have momentum coming even after a loss so yeah I'm just kind of looking at this uh, as a great opportunity for me to kind of capitalize Capitalize on you know take the momentum going forward. How much did that change things? I mean, how how much more were you recognizing things like that? It was that night after? and day, you know. Like, was, and again, that's never really been a goal of mine to be, you know, like, you know, in magazines and like that. Like, I've always been um, driven by the win. Um, but you know, it's definitely refreshing knowing that I have have the support here, and you know, I I, have a, I feel I have a responsibility to kind of come out and perform. Canadians sort of have a reputation for love fighters yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Who go you know fight beyond the odds and, and you know help people like that. For sure, I think that last last fight, you know, like really hit home just a lot of Canadians. I think it just kind of represented you know who we are as people and uh, as athletes as well. In this in this year, you've uh, actually become really a big ambassador for the game. Like things like Monday, uh, also you know lobbying government. Uh, is that tougher actually for you than actually getting in the cage? You know what? Like I enjoy I enjoy being out there and doing interviews and in, 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 uh, talking on behalf, on behalf of fighters. And you know, because that's the big thing is about the sport is that I think people have to understand the fighters behind it. Because you know, at first, like you know, they, um, uh, not just UFC but MMA, they they, they just promoted the spectacle but now people are understanding the athletes and you know understanding the people and the stories behind it and that's a big thing between you know taking the sport to the next level and I think that's you know what the UFC is really trying to do with Fox is really tell the stories behind the stories because everyone can watch a fight and understand what's going on but you know knowing the stories knowing the training knowing the, you know the backstory between everybody is, is huge. There tends to be a perception from some that you know there's, it's about brawlers and, and uh, you know the uh, folks use barbaric and that kind of thing. But, are you guys, with what you've done this week, with with uh, this event, is it is it more about, as you say, showing you guys are, are just top-notch athletes doing your oh, thing? Oh, for sure. And again, it's, it's a constant, um, you know, the sport is relatively new compared to, like, hockey or whatnot. I'm sure when hockey came out, people thought it was somewhat bare bare to football. You know, it, take, it takes time and it takes effort from uh, you know, the promotion and from the fighters as well to get out there and kind of do do things like that. Because that is a big role as, a, as an athlete, not just as a fighter, but to get out and, and do things for the community for the sport to promote it properly. With some of the, the tough times you had this year, uh, you got everybody with you this week uh, in town for support. Yeah, for sure. It's been a you know devastating loss losing my you know my coach and mentor you know Sean Tompkins. Uh, it was devastating, but I mean I'm I'm looking at it as a motivator because you know I think I have a responsibility to carry on his legacy, and the way I do that is I go out there and I win. I go out there and perform. What advice would he have given you in your preparation? You know, he just, 
just lead, you know, lead by example. You know, I think this is, uh, you know, there, each one of us had to kind of step up and fill a little bit of his leadership roles, and that's that's what he did is lead by example. So I'm going to go out there and do that on Saturday night. Do you have any 